Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about environmental audio, how we can open up Unreal and we can do an audio pass for our environment. Specifically, we're going to look at how we can do a fire emitting sound effect, what it means to have looping audio, how we can handle occlusion, and a lot of other types of things so that you can go and decorate your levels with different audio sources, make it sound really nice. And we'll try to stick to the basics so you can get an audio pass really quickly and then add more detail later. By the end, we're going to have a custom audio cue set up. So for our looping fire effect, we'll have our little sound source. You can hear it. We'll also do some occlusion so that when we pass behind a wall, we'll hear it just a little bit. Um, and that way you can take this and you can take these concepts and decorate the rest of your level and make other kinds of audio emitters. So let's get to it. So when you first open your Unreal project, if you haven't done any audio before, it should be pretty much empty by default. You can walk around, you're not gonna hear anything, right? Maybe some sound effects or things, but what we wanna do is we want to decorate our map with environmental audio, meaning that as we walk through, we may hear things like crackling fires or the hum from some electronics or, or something like that. So if I go over here, I'm going to look in the starter content and I just want to find some kind of effect. In my case, it's a fire. I'm going to pull that in. It might be a Niagara system by the time you use a newer version. It doesn't matter. Either way, we want a looping fire effect. The problem is when we hit play, right, it doesn't really sound like a fire. So at least as of right now, there is also some fire sound effect inside of starter content. Now I could just use this queue that's already set up, but what I would rather do is show you how to even create this queue because long-term you wanna be able to import your own sound effects and do all this with a custom sound, right? Not just the provided starter content. So let's assume that we didn't have this queue right here, or let's actually make a new one from our Fire 01. So you can imagine that you imported your own sound, that it was looping and you edited that properly inside of your audio editing program, and you want to make a cue out of it. Now, the first question might be, what is the difference between a wave and a cue? If you drag your wave straight into the scene, it's going to make an ambient sound out of this, which is fine, right? We'll probably still hear it. All right, we can hear it but it's really loud. If we wanna customize it at all, we have to go and customize this specific one over here, right? Like we would come down here, we do all the settings and so forth. But then let's say we have multiple fires in our scene. I'm holding down Alt to duplicate that out. And if we have multiple fires, the problem is now we have to customize this one, but really we just wanna reuse the same fire sound every single time we reuse it. So we could go on and on and on. This would not be a, very good way to work because we are customizing every individual one rather than all of them together pointing back to the same source. So instead, what I'd rather do is have even more control by setting up a cue out of that sound effect. So I'm gonna pretend that this one doesn't exist. We'll make a new one. I'm going to select the wave that I want to create a cue that I can customize more uh, out of this wave. So select it, right click and click create cue at the very top. Now what that's gonna do is it's going to create a Q asset out of this fire. And I'm just going to say, um, I'm going to call this new just so we can keep track of it. Now, the reason I'm keeping the old one here is so that you can look back and, you know, reference the one that they've created and you can see some additional properties and things. This way, we're just going to start from scratch as if we're importing our own new sound. So we have our new Q created. We can double click to open it up. And if you created it off of the wave like that, where you have it selected and you hit create Q like we did, then it's already gonna set this up for you by creating a wave player node and connecting it to the output. All this is saying is play this sound effect. If I click it, you can see, we can select a sound wave. You know, we could select a different one if we want, but we probably don't wanna do that. If this didn't exist, we could just right click and search for wave player like that, hook it in and select a sound wave. Right. So we would type in fire01, whatever our sound, our, our name of our wave file is. More importantly, we want to make sure that we click looping. Now, if we were going to play this sound once during the gameplay, like a gunshot or a footstep, we would not want it to be looping. But for anything inside of our environment, we want this to always be playing, right? When the player is near, we want to hear that fire and we don't want it to stop playing. So in this case, we do want it to be looping. This would be the case in a lot of environmental audio. So typically in environment, you would want to set that as looping. Hit save, and really, as long as our cue is playing our sound wave and it's looping, that's probably all we really need. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice is that if I put it inside of my scene, so let's go over here, fire01 new, I'm just gonna 
drag it over on top of this fire effect, put it slightly above, put it inside of if you want. But now that we have our effect, we're not hearing it in preview. Right? If, we, if we hit the play button, we hear it. We would probably want to customize that. It's a little too loud. But the more important thing is I want to be able to hear it in preview in many cases, right? I don't want to, want to hit the play button and go all the way through my level to this one point. So I'm going to show you another thing. If you go up into the top right under settings and you click that, um, newer versions of Unreal, maybe this button moves around, but really we're looking for the settings inside of our editor. Right now it's on the top right. You go down to real-time audio. So what this is saying is in the editor, while previewing, right, just moving around our level, decorating, this is the volume of the in-editor audio. So I'm going to turn that up. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. I still want you to be able to hear me talking, right? Uh, so I'll turn it right around to there. You can customize yours how you want. Get out of that. So now you should be able to hear the audio inside of your editor, right? If I move really far away, we're still hearing it. That's because our attenuation is very big and we'll fix that in a second. But as long as you're hearing something, that's the important part. So now we can just play around in the editor. We can still hear our, edit, our audio as we edit and we don't have to go into play mode. As long as you do that, then you are uh, set to go and we can continue to customize. Right now, our audio is way too loud. We can hear the fire from all the way back here. The reason for that is because when we add our cue to the scene, it's actually pulling all of the, it's called attenuation, the attenuation settings from the queue inside of the asset rather than from the specific one that we can edit here. And attenuation is just how loud it is based on my distance. So if I, if, if I have a small attenuation, then I'm only going to hear it when I'm really close by. Right? I also have this turned down in the settings just so you can hear me. But let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to open up the queue over here. And over in the queue, if I click the output and I go to attenuation, you see that I don't have anything selected. Attenuation settings would allow us to create a custom attenuation asset that we can reuse for multiple different objects. It's, it's good to have like a default setting, but let's say that we want to override this in the queue and define our own. So you can see that right now the inner radius is 400 and the outer radius is 3600. 400 is like, um, if I go back, and here you can see 400 would be this range right here. This means it's our fire is at max volume inside of this inner radius, and then it'll taper out over distance all the way to our outer radius. This is the minimum distance that we can hear anything at all. So as soon as we get to the outer circle, we'll start hearing just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Then as we move closer, we'll get louder and louder. So we hear our, our max. Now again, I have this turned down. I'm going to turn this up a little bit more so you can hear it. All right. So you can hear that fade out. So that's a little bit large, right? We want to turn that down. I think a good default for fire, we can actually go and consult the previous one, right? Inside of our assets over here and go to our previous queue and we could open it up and look and they have 200 and 1200. I think that's pretty good. Um, we'll go 200 and 1200 just to hear the difference. So come back over here. See the outer radius is closer to that. All right, that seems a lot more appropriate. Um, so we'll keep that. That is our inner radius and our, um, I guess you could call it fall off distance. I always call it outer radius, but the minimum distance you can even hear the sound and the maximum volume at this inner circle. Another thing you might want to do is this attenuation function. Linear just means translate the volume linearly between the minimum and the maximum. In the real world, audio doesn't fade out evenly. Uh, we would use other algorithms to figure that out. It gives you a lot here, right? You could click natural sound is probably the most realistic, but we don't always want realistic for games. Logarithmic is a pretty simple one that just does a little curve. Usually this is a, a good thing for smaller emitters. Recommend it, but honestly, linear would be fine. I think logarithmic will sound a little bit more uh, natural, I think. But you can test the other ones as well if you want. Save it. Let's hear what that sounds like. You can hear it has a, a quicker fade as we get close, and I think that's fine. This is pretty much the basics for making an emitter. You could do a lot with just this. But I wanted to show you a couple more things uh, that you're going to come across once you start decorating that I think is worth talking about and showing you a uh, reasonable solution for both. The first thing is if I had two fires right next to each other like this. Let's imagine we had something like that. 
You see if I hit the play button right there, uh, it, it was a little bit garbled and um, distorted. What happens is if you have two audio emitters right next to each other doing the exact same pitch or something very close to it, uh, you can sometimes get this distorted effect. Now, the real solution is don't put two emitters that have the exact same pitch close to each other, right? This could just be one emitter, for example, that's a little bit larger, make this fire sound. You know, if you can't spread them out, which would be the ideal solution, right? Spread them out a bit so you have less of that distortion. Let's say if you can't do that, another quick solution you could do, which can sometimes help, is to add some random pitch variation. So uh, you can do this very easily inside of the queue. What you can do is you can go over here and you can add something called a modulator. And if I right click and type modulator right there, I like to put modulators on most of my sounds, which will add some randomization to both the volume and the pitch. It'll make them each sound slightly different, which can avoid the distortion, but also sound a little bit more natural. Um, every gunshot fire, for example, is not gonna sound the exact same. So it's usually good to put a modulator. The default is pretty good. It gives you a 0.5 difference uh, up or down. So like lower pitch and higher pitched, right? We go lower and higher, add a little bit variation there and in, in addition to the volume. And it's gonna be pretty subtle. You may not even hear it, right? I mean, it's pretty subtle. You can make that a wider range if you want. Um, let's say, you know, even more uh, padding to avoid the distortion, possibly, in some sounds. Again, this is not always going to solve the problem, um, but it at least helps it a bit. And save it, see what happens. All right, so we can hit play and test it out. Right, it's a little bit better. Uh, again, you could randomly get a pitch that's very close that might still give you the, the distortion, but the real solution is to spread it out, but this will help some. Uh, so I'm going to delete this one now that we've talked through that. All right, so let's say we have our fire, and another thing you're going to notice, let me try and emulate this for you. Hit play. We pass the corner. Come up here. This sounds wrong, right? Like, we don't want it to play through walls, potentially, or if I'm in a different room and there's just a wall on the other side, the wall would block a lot of the sound. And, you know, it's very difficult to accurately emulate this in, inside of games, but there's a few simple things we can do to get it a little bit closer. Um, so I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's gonna cause other problems too. Uh, so if we hit play, what we want to happen is we want the wall to occlude the sound to some degree. Now, the simple thing you could do is if you come into the Fire 01 new queue, Again, this could be your custom sound. I'm just using the example one so we don't have to import anything. And what I want to do is come to the output and we're going to turn on occlusion. So I'll just say enable occlusion. Now, by default, it's not going to do anything because our occlusion volume attenuation right here is at one. This means it's at full volume. If I were to turn this down to 0 0.2, so all I've done is enable occlusion and turn it down to 0 0.2. Let's see what happens this over to the side. We can actually preview it in editor. See how it got really quiet? Now that sounds better, right? I mean, we can go like that. The problem can be is if it's too sudden, it's too sudden, it can be distracting. Like what if we had pillars inside of our room and it's just like just ducking the fire really quickly. So you may want to adjust this value or, or maybe even this one, this interpolation time, instead of being quite so quick, we could do something like maybe 0.3. Maybe that will sound a little less sudden. Let's try it. All right, a little bit more natural, I think. Um, but that is the volume setting. Now, another thing I want to show you, which is pretty cool, is the occlusion low pass filter. I'm going to turn up the volume so that you can hear this more clearly. I'm going to turn it back to one. Uh, we'll keep the interpolation time, but the occlusion low pass filter frequency, if you imagine the entire volume as a line, like a vertical line, and we are only going to allow the low frequencies in, and we're going to expand that line upwards meaning that we are going to take out all the high frequencies down to a certain frequency level, in this case, down to 1,000. 20,000 is pretty close to the full range of audio, so 1,000 will only allow the lowest of the low through. I'm gonna turn this down to 1,000, hit save. So what this is saying is, don't cut the volume at all because the volume's at one, but only allow in frequencies at the low end, up to 1,000, which again, is really low. So we'll save that. We'll come back in, hit play. Now let's let's listen to this. 
You hear how we only hear the, the low rumble? Versus the high pitch crackling? Um, I think that sounds pretty cool. You could imagine that if inside of your game you're outside of a nightclub or something, you hear the, you know, the trancey, uh, the bass and um, the, the drum kick, then you're going to hear that thumping through the walls, but you're not going to hear all the instruments. We can emulate that with this, right? By only allowing in the low, uh, low rumbling or like thunder from outside of a log cabin in the woods or something. So you can play around with this value too if you like. This is how much you want to allow the sound to pass through walls. In the end, you really want to find a balance because I probably do want the volume to go down as well. I'm going to go somewhere in between. So I'll say 0.6, so we'll cut the volume by almost half. We'll keep the interpolation time just to add a little bit of padding to that quick ducking. And then we're going to keep the low end right there. So with all of these, let's try it out and see what it sounds like. I think this will be pretty good. Save it, play. Right? I think that sounds pretty good. We'll test it up here. We jump into the fire room. So with our fire effect and with our occlusion and with our pitch variation, it should give you enough that you can import a sound, make a cue, make it looping, you know, customize it a little bit, adjust the attenuation, um, add the pitch variation, add, add the occlusion and the ducking so that we can resolve most of the little effects. And you could imagine other sound effects like air vents and um, computers that make sounds or like a washing machine or something. This should give you enough that you can begin doing point emitter decoration throughout your level and it should sound reasonably okay. We're using Unreal's built-in tools and not like a specialized middleware like WYs, which you could go into if you want, but it's useful to know how to do this with the basic tools to get all the barriers out of the way so that then you can go into the more complex stuff later. And I think it's important that you be comfortable doing a basic audio pass. And then if you decide you need more environmental audio and immersion tools, then you can look into that later. So um, that's it. Just want to show you how you can do a quick audio pass with your own sound effects that you can import. And hopefully this helps you out.